To be able to completely understand Bitcoin halving, you first need to understand how Bitcoin works. So, here is a quick overview. The Bitcoin network uses a mechanism called proof of work. In proof of work, people buy powerful expensive hardware devices and computers to verify the Bitcoin transactions and help secure the network. What happens is that a computer gathers some transactions in a group called a block. But for this block of transactions to be accepted on the network, the computer needs to solve a hard mathematical problem, which is trying to generate a correct hash. Don't be confused, it is actually pretty simple. So there is something called the hashing algorithm. You can think of this hashing algorithm as a black box that you give it any data and it will give you a hash, which is a series of 64 letters and numbers. The data you input can be a word, a group of transactions, or an entire book, it doesn't matter, it will always give a hash of 64 letters and numbers. But the thing here is that changing any tiny part in the input will give a totally different hash. In this example, we just put a capital letter instead of a small one, and it gave us a totally different hash. So in proof of work in Bitcoin, the network uses a hash function called the SHA-256. So let's say that the network states that the hash needs to start with five zeros. So the computer inputs the block of transactions along with a random number into the hash function and generate a hash. As you can see, this hash doesn't start with any zeros, so it won't be accepted. So the computer will change the random number and try again as many times as it takes to generate a hash that starts with five zeros. All the computers on the network are trying to do this at the same time, and the first computer that successfully generates a correct hash starting with five zeros will get its block accepted on the network and will be rewarded with newly created bitcoins and with also the transaction fees. So what these computers do is known as mining, and these newly created bitcoins are called the block reward, and this is actually how new bitcoins are created. But a very important point here is that there is a maximum supply of 21 million bitcoins, and as of the time of making this video, 19,120,000 bitcoins have been created and given to miners. So, with less than 2 million bitcoins remaining, does that mean we will mine the last bitcoin soon? Well, that is where having come in to slow down the creation of new bitcoins. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, you will know what is Bitcoin halving and why it happens, the impact of halving on the price of Bitcoin, and the impact on miners. And finally, we will talk about what will happen when Bitcoin reaches the 21 million limit. So, let's dive in. So, what is Bitcoin halving? Simply, Bitcoin halving is reducing the block reward given to miners to half every four years. So, at first, when Bitcoin was created in 2009, the block reward was 50 Bitcoins, which means that the miner who could add his block to the blockchain received 50 Bitcoins as a reward. And it stayed like this from 2009 till the first halving in 2012, which reduced this block reward to 25 Bitcoins. So, from 2012 to 2016, the block reward was 25 Bitcoins. In 2016, the second halving happened, and it reduced the block reward to 12 Bitcoins. So, from 2016 to 2020, the block reward was 12 Bitcoins. And finally, in 2020, the third halving happened, and it reduced the block reward to 6.25 Bitcoins. And this is the current block reward that the miners are getting right now for each block and it will stay like this until the next halving in 2024, which will reduce the reward to 3.125 bitcoins. A very important thing to know here is that halving doesn't happen every four years exactly. That is because the Bitcoin network doesn't count time as we do in days and hours, it counts time in blocks. So halving happens every 210,000 blocks, which means that after 210,000 new blocks are mined, the next halving happens. You may know that mining a block on the Bitcoin blockchain takes on average around 10 minutes, and if you try to calculate how much time it takes to finish these 210,000 blocks, you will find that it takes 3.99 years, which is approximately 4 years. So, another important point in halving is that it won't happen forever, the last halving is number 32, and it is supposed to happen in the year 2140. By that time, we should have reached the 21 million limit, and after this last halving, there will be no more new bitcoins created 
and no block rewards will be given to miners. We will talk about what may happen then, but now, let's see why halving happens. So, as you may know inflation is a big problem of traditional fiat currencies. As governments print more and more of a currency, it begins to lose its value. And Bitcoin was created to be treated as a commodity like gold, which is available in limited amounts. So, if Bitcoin has a high inflation rate and there is always large amounts of new Bitcoins created as rewards for miners, then it can lose value easily, as there is no scarcity. So, at first, the block reward was very large at 50 Bitcoins per block to encourage people to mine and secure the network. But, as more miners join the network, the reward is reduced by halving to control inflation and make Bitcoin more scarce, which theoretically should make it more valuable. That is because, if the demand for Bitcoin stays the same and the new supply is reduced, then the price should go up. Even more than that, Bitcoin may become deflationary in the future after the last halving, that basically means that after the final halving, the total supply of Bitcoin will decrease over time. You may be wondering, how can the total supply decrease over time? Well, many beginners send Bitcoins to wrong addresses by mistake. These addresses don't have any owners and the coins sent to these addresses are lost and that reduces the total available supply. Let us know in the comments what do you think about this idea of having to control the inflation of Bitcoin, but now, let's see the impact of previous halving events on the price of Bitcoin. So, the first halving event was in 2012, and it happened on the 28th of November. On that day, one Bitcoin was worth only $12, but a year exactly after the halving, the price went all the way up to $1,031. But it didn't stay high, two years exactly after the halving, the price went down to $376. The second halving was on the 9th of July 2016. On the halving day, the price of Bitcoin was $660. But in the next year after the halving, exactly in December 2017, the price was $19,800, which was an insane increase in just one year. But in the second year after the halving, just like what happened in the first halving, the price went down again to around $6,740. The last halving we have happened on the 11th of May 2020. On the halving day, the price was $8,600 and a year exactly after the halving, it went to $56,700, but also, like the two previous halving events, it went back to $28,000 the year after. So, of course there were a lot of other factors that impacted these price movements, but here, the pattern was repeated in the three previous halving events. So, if the history repeats itself, then, after the next halving in 2024, the price may go up by a lot in 2025, then it may go back down in 2026. But still, this is based on the history we have, no one can predict accurately what will happen to the price. Now, let's see the impact of halving on miners. So, as what we have said, halving reduces the miners' rewards, which of course impacts their profitability. So, large mining companies that are based in countries with cheap electricity may still continue mining and be profitable. But many individuals and small companies in countries with expensive electricity will go out of business and stop mining as the profits will not be enough to cover the costs of the hardware and electricity paid. When that happens and a lot of miners stop mining, the network's hash rate will decrease, which is simply a measure of the total computing power of all computers on the network. Remember when we said at the beginning that all the computers on the network are working to generate a correct hash by trying different numbers? Well, a hash rate is how many tries a computer can do in one second. The more tries a computer can do in one second, the less time it will take to find the correct number and generate the correct hash. So, the network hash rate measures the total number of tries all computers can do in one second, which is a very large number. So, when this hash rate drops because a lot of computers has stopped mining, the total number of tries all computers can do in one second is now less, which means they may take longer than 10 minutes to generate a correct hash and mine a block. So, to solve this problem, the Bitcoin code has a mechanism to adjust the difficulty of mining based on the network hash rate. So, when the hash rate drops, mining gets easier, so instead of having to generate a hash starting with five zeros, computers need to get a hash starting with just three zeros for example, which is much easier to do and it encourages more miners to join the network. This adjustment is done every two weeks, or to be more exact, every 2016 blocks, and it is done to keep the block time at 10 minutes. 
A very important point is here is that like what we said, the price of Bitcoin usually increases after a halving. This increase in price compensates the miners for their reduced rewards. So, they are making a smaller amount of Bitcoin, but the price of each Bitcoin is much higher than before the halving. Now let's talk about what may happen when all Bitcoins are mined, and we reach the 21 million limit. First off, this maximum supply technically can be changed before we reach it. But for this to happen the entire Bitcoin community need to agree on the change which is not easy at all, as Bitcoin may lose its value. Some people believe that Bitcoin will follow Ethereum and switch to proof of stake, where there is no mining and no huge electricity costs. But still, there is no active work right now to do this. So, for now let's say that nothing changed and we reached the 21 million limit. So, there is no block rewards and no new Bitcoins will be created. When that happens, miners will only earn transaction fees paid by the users. You may be wondering, is that enough? Won't miners just stop mining? Well, one thing could happen by then is that the usage of Bitcoin by users may increase and when that happens, the transaction fees will greatly increase, just like what happened in 2021, where the transaction fees paid in one block reached 2.82 Bitcoins, which was around $150,000 at that time. Another thing is that some people expect that the price of electricity will be much cheaper in the future. So the cost of electricity paid by Bitcoin miners in the future will be a lot less than what is paid now, so the earned transaction fees may be enough for them to cover the electricity fees and still make profits. The only thing we are sure about right now is that nobody really knows what will happen by 2140. All of these theories may turn wrong at the end, so let us know in the comments below what do you think will happen. At the end of this video, we really hope you learned what you need to know about Bitcoin halving, and if you liked our video, hit the like button, let us know in the comments if you have any questions, and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications, so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.